Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Wednesday, the 23rd of September. Today is uh, the start of a, of a series of Ember Days. Uh, Ember Days, you may be asking, what is that? So Ember Day is a, um, they occur quarterly throughout the year and they are um, days of prayer and fasting. Uh, of course, you're all prepared for that. I expect you all to be diligent in your prayers and your fasting. Um, but yeah, so they occur um, the kind of the Wednesday, um, Wednesday through um, uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday after um, um, a kind of each course throughout the year. So they occur after St Lucy's Day, uh, which obviously is the, day, is the 30th of December, uh, the first Sunday after Lent, um, after Pentecost, and after Holy Cross Day, which is on the 14th. Um, so they are um, days where we should be in prayer and fasting. Um, it's also a time when um, we have ordinations. And quite often ordinations take uh, take place on um, the Saturdays or the Sundays around uh, Ember Day. So um, some of you may have seen Ember cards before, either from Suzanne Johnson or Sulep or others as they were being ordained. And it is, again, that's that prayerful intention um, for the person being ordained. And so as we gather for prayer i'd like us to just think on those who are in prayer and fasting uh, for those who are uh, being ordained for those who were priested last week for those who are to be um, uh, deaconed uh, fairly soon and also for those who are considering their vocation that vocation is not just for ministry it is a word which is often used for those who are going to become um, deacons priests readers and so on but actually, vocation is wherever God has called you. And there are many who would say that uh, actually teaching is vocation, that being a doctor is vocation, and so on. And so, really, I would not don't just pray for the clergy. They will always appreciate prayers. But pray for anybody who is trying to figure out where they are called to be, what the gifts and skills they have and the talents they have, and how they can best utilize them uh, to give praise to God and to give thanks for him. So let us spend a moment in stillness before we begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire of love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 34. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let me exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look upon him, and be radiant, and your face shall not be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my trouble. The angels of the, the, angel of the Lord encamped around those who feared him, and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Blessed is the one who trusts in him. For the Lord, all you his holy ones, for those who fear him lack nothing. Lions may lack and suffer hunger, 
but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones, so that not one of them is broken. But evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and will condemn none who seek refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the first book of Kings, chapter 10, verses 1 to 25. When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fate of Solomon, fame of Solomon, fame due to the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from the king that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba had observed all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his table, the seating of his officials, and the attendance of his servants, their clothing, his valets, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was more spirit in her. So she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own land of your accomplishments and of your wisdom, but I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen it. Not even a half has been told me. Your wisdom and prosperity far surpasses the report I have heard. Happy are your wives. Happy are these your servants, who continually attend you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delighted in you and set you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loves Israel forever. He has made you king to execute justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, a great quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did spices come in such quantity as that which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the uh, fleet of Hiram, which carried gold from Ophir, uh, brought from Ophir a great quantity of almug wood and precious stones. From the almug wood, the, the king made supports for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house, lyres also, and harps for the singers. No such almug wood had come or been seen to this day. Meanwhile, King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba every desire that she expressed as well as what he gave her out of Solomon's royal bounty. Then she returned her, old la her own land with her servants. The weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold, beside that which came from the traders and from the business of the merchants and from all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the land. King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went into the large shield. He made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three minas of gold went into each shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with the finest gold. The throne had six steps. The top of the throne was, uh, was rounded in the back, and on each side of the seat were arms rests and two lions sitting beside the armrests, while twelve lions were standing, one on, on each end of a step, on the six steps. Nothing like it was ever made in any kingdom. All King Solomon drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was not considered as anything in the days of Solomon. For the king had a fleet of ships of Tarshish at sea with the fleet of Hiram. 
Once every three years, a fleet of ships at Tarshish used to come bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Thus, the king, of, king Solomon excelled at all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. The whole earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put into his mind. Every one of them brought a present, objects of silver and gold, garments, weaponry, spices, horses and mules, so much year by year. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call upon him whilst he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. <clears throat> Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Our New Testament reading is a continuation of the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 1 to 15. After Paul and Silas had passed through Amphilios and uh, um, Apollonia, and then came to Thessalonica, there was a synod of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days argued with them from the Scriptures, explaining and provide, proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to, rise, raise from, and to rise from the dead, saying, This is the Messiah, Jesus, who I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some ruffians in the marketplaces, they formed a mob and set the city in uproar. Whilst they were searching for Paul and Cyrus to bring them out to the assembly, they had attacked Jason's house. When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authorities, shouting, These people have been turning the world upside down, have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. They are acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. The people and the city officials were disturbed when they heard this, and after they had taken bail from Jason and the others, they let them go. That very night the believers sent Paul and Silas off to Bagoria, and when they arrived they went to the Jewish synagogue. These Jews were more receptive than those in Thessalonica, for they welcomed the message very eagerly and examined the scriptures every day to see whether these things were so. Many of them therefore believed, including not a few Greek women and men of high standing. But when the Jews of Thessalonica learned that the word of the Lord had been proclaimed by Paul in Barolia as well, they came there too to stir up and incite the crowds. Then the believers immediately sent Paul away to the coast, but Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those who conducted Paul brought him as far as Athens, and after receiving instruction to have Silas and Timothy join him as soon as possible, they left him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and after it receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and after it receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and after it receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and after it receive me with glory. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, 
could set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach this new day, we ask you be with us. Be with us in guiding our thoughts and our actions. May you be at the front of our minds in all that we do and say and think. We pray for all who are preparing for ordination. For those who were ordained priests last weekend, we pray particularly for Suzanne. We pray for those who are to be ordained deacon in the coming weeks. And we pray particularly for Samson. We pray for all who are discerning their vocations, for those who are called to ordain priesthood, for those who are called to all spheres where they can use their gifts and skills to honour you, Lord. We pray for those who are fasting and those who are dedicating themselves to prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are in self-isolation, those who are in quarantine, those who are shielding, those who are in hospital, and those who have died. We pray for those whose livelihoods and jobs have been affected by the announcements in the past few days. We pray for those who are anxious and worried about what the future will hold. We pray for those whose mental health is going to be adversely affected. We pray for those who are in isolation, who are feeling alone and forgotten. We pray for all those, Lord, who are anxiously awaiting test results, for those who are struggling to get tests. We pray for the NHS and for all who are helping with this virus, for those who are trying to organise and keep things running. We pray, Lord, that your wisdom will come upon the government, that it may know the right course and find the right balance. We pray for those who are longing to get out of the house who are stuck. We pray for those who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for governments throughout the world as they try to tackle this virus. We pray for those who are most vulnerable, those who are without income, without homes or shelter, (coughs) for those who cannot afford health care, for those who are struggling. We pray and give thanks, Lord, for the work of the food bank, for those who are supplying it with the resources needed. We pray for all who are in need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who will gather for worship today at St Mary's, for those who will receive communion, and we pray for those who are unable to receive at this time. 
Lord, send your comfort and your spirit upon those who are in need of spiritual communion. Be with those who are desperate to be in communion with you. We pray for those who have not yet heard your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace in this world, for an end to violence, end to suffering, an end of discrimination on any grounds. We pray that all your children may be viewed as equally yours, that all would be treated with kindness and respect and recognised as being your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are suffering from addiction. We pray for Davy and his family. We pray for those who are undergoing cancer treatment. We pray for Joe and her family and Megan and her family. We pray for those who are awaiting diagnosis and treatment. We pray for Robert. We pray for those who are reaching the end of their lives. We pray for those who recently lost their lives. We pray, Lord, for all who are known to you who are suffering. We pray particularly for those who are suffering alone. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one and for those who carry those wounds and scars of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always ab abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me this evening at 5pm for evening prayer. And at 11 o'clock today at St Mary's there will be a communion service. If you are able to join us, you will be very welcome, but it will not be streamed online. Um, in terms of obviously the announcements being made yesterday by the government, um, uh, currently, apart from weddings, which we haven't got any booked for at the moment, I can't see any um, uh, big changes occurring within services. Uh, but obviously, we will continue to monitor uh, the Church of England's uh, COVID page and as things progress. So uh, please assume everything is normal. If there are any changes, I will send out emails and messages on Facebook as well, just to um, have you make you aware of any changes which do affect us. But I think we're fairly safe in terms of we've done everything we can. So I would uh, please assume that we will carry on as we are. Until we can see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a very good day.